Okay, we're looking at number five here. The gas phase conversion of 1,3-butadiene to 1,5-cyclooctadiene uh, was studied providing the data for the plot shown below. Um, we're plotting the inverse of the concentration of butadiene versus time. And we want to explain how this confirms that that reaction is second order and part A. And we can do that mainly because this is a nice straight line. And uh, had it been any other type of decomposition, uh, first order or zeroth order, that would not be straight. But since it's a straight line, uh, we do know that the um, reaction is second order. Now, since it is second order, and we do know that we have a straight line, we actually can calculate the second order rate constant by finding the slope of this line. Now, multiple ways to do this. And I'm going to get that with the y2 minus y1 and x2 minus x1. Now, if I actually had the data, um, the actual true numbers, I'd throw it into a spreadsheet and calculate the trend line and get the slope of that trend line because that would actually fit every single one of these points. But since I don't have that, I'm just going to grab um, any two points. And I'm just going to go with the largest of each. So my time, so the bottom I'm going to have 2,000 minus zero, because I'm going to use these two points. And then my two y's, that one's right on the line, right at 40. That one's easy. This one's a little bit above 120. Um, and that scale goes up to all the way down 140. I'm going to go with like 125. I think that's a little high, but it, it's close enough because it's just a good approximation. And if we had the data to make that graph, we would have had the data to actually do a real trend line and get this exact. All right, but this is going to be close enough for what we're doing. So 125 minus 40 divided by 2,000. We get that, and that is our um, K, our rate constant. And we do have units. Um, we could look up the units for second order rate constant, but you can actually figure it out in this because um, on your Y is your inverse of moles. So the units are liters and moles. And on the bottom is just seconds. So this is liters per mole second. All right, part C, it just wants us to determine the initial concentration of 1,3-butadiene. Actually, it's a simple calculation. It's one that's easily overlooked, though. So initial concentration would be when time is zero. So that is equivalent to the concentration. But we're not saying the concentration is 40. We're saying 1 over the concentration of the butadiene is 40. So to get the actual concentration, I just need the inverse of 40. So the original concentration was 0 0.025. And this would just be moles per liter.